please turn in your Bibles today to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 4 and place a marker in Hebrews chapter 12. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and Hebrews chapter 12. Today when I read, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version. And we're continuing a message that we started last week that is kind of turning into a series, quite honestly, called Stay the Course. Last week, I began by asking those who were here if they were tired. And I made it clear that I didn't mean did they get enough sleep the night before. I wasn't concerned with whether or not they needed a nap. I wanted to know if they were really tired. Were they physically, mentally, emotionally, or maybe even spiritually drained? We talked about how sometimes in life we can find ourselves in a position where we're ready to throw up our hands and say, I'm done. I quit. I give up. Now, sometimes we feel that way because of the busyness of life. Sometimes it's because of trials that we have faced. Sometimes it's because of the way that that people have treated us. But as I mentioned last week, so many times in our lives we feel that way, not because of one or two big things, but because of a lot of little things that just pile up and pile up and pile up over the years. It happens to the best of us. Sometimes we all get tired. In fact, last week we talked about how even Paul felt that way. Paul spent much of his life traveling and and spreading the gospel, and he spent time writing a lot, and then When he wasn't doing those things, he worked as a tent maker to support himself. And Paul didn't just lead a busy life. We talked about last week how he also led a difficult life. Now, we're not going to read that from this passage today, but you see it on the screen there because it was part of last week's message. I encourage you to go home and look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and, and read verses 24 through 28, and you can see that it says that Paul was beaten several times with whips and with rods. He was stoned one time. He, and I don't mean that he got high, I mean that he had large rocks thrown at his head. He was stoned and he was jailed several times and he was even shipwrecked a few times. Paul had a very difficult life. Paul had every reason to be tired and he was. We actually see that in the last letter that Paul wrote, which is a book that we call 2 Timothy. So I want us to read that passage again that we read last week, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 6 through 8, and what we're looking at is what Paul might tell us to do when we are tired. Here's what it says. Paul says, For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. In his letter, Paul tells Timothy that he's about to die. He does it kind of poetically. He says, I'm being poured out like a drink offering. And then in verse 7, Paul tells Timothy three things that Paul did in his life to live in such a way that he could be proud of what he had done. And and I believe that in doing so, what he was doing was telling Timothy, here's three things, Timothy, that you should do. And I also believe that it's three things that we should all do, especially when we're tired. The first thing and the thing that we talked about last week that Paul says is keep fighting. Paul says, I have fought the good fight. Now, we're not going to talk about that again this week. If you missed that message and you want to find it, you can go to our YouTube channel at centerpointnwa.com or YouTube and search for Centerpoint NWA. But the second thing, the thing that we're going to talk about today that Paul told Timothy is keep running. Everybody say keep running. Paul told Timothy, I have finished the race. Church, have you ever been in a race and felt like quitting? Now, listen, let's be real. I think for most of us, the question might be, have you ever been in a race and not felt like quitting? That's especially true for a long-distance race such as the one to which Paul is referring. Now, personally, I'm not a runner. I know that may surprise you. 
But when I do cardio workouts, which is, is not as often as it should be, I'll admit that, but when I do, what I do is I get on my treadmill and I set it to the steepest incline that I can and I walk uphill. There are many experts that believe that you burn as many or more calories walking uphill than you do running and it's a lot better on your knees. But I do it, I treat it kind of like interval training. What I'll do is once I get set at that incline, then I'll bump the speed up a little bit to where it's really, really difficult, and then I'll bring it down for a minute or so. Then I'll bump it back up, and then I'll bring it down over and over and over. And there's something that I have learned through the years doing that. I have learned that 10 seconds can be an eternity. Especially when that 10 seconds is the last 10 seconds of a minute interval going at a 15 incline, four and a half speed. I'm telling you, that last 10 seconds is brutal. And sometimes I have felt like that I could not make it 10 more seconds. Sometimes I've felt like quitting. And, and in fact, sometimes I have I said, look, we're going to bump this back down to 3.0. I just can't handle it anymore. Maybe that's how you feel today in life. Maybe you feel like quitting your job. Maybe you feel like quitting on your marriage. Maybe you feel like quitting on the ministry that God has given you to do. Or maybe you even feel like quitting this whole church thing altogether. I hope that you're not here today feeling this way, but there's even a chance that you're here and you have considered quitting living, taking your own life. There's no doubt in my mind that Paul found himself on multiple occasions feeling like quitting. Now, I know that because Paul was in ministry for a long time, and I've been in the ministry for a long time. Listen, I'll be real honest with you, church. There have been days that Christina and I have gone home and just felt like quitting, just felt like giving up. But we haven't, at least not yet. And in whatever you're facing today, you haven't, at least not yet. Today, I want to encourage you to keep running. Paul says, I have finished the race. In other words, I didn't give up. I didn't quit. I didn't give in. I didn't get distracted or preoccupied and, and, and chase after other things. I didn't allow people or the enemy to distract me. I have finished the race. Everybody say finished. Church, when we're tired, it's important that we keep running so that someday we too can look back on our lives and we can say, you know what? I have finished the race. Today I want to share with you three things that, that I noticed in studying Paul's life that I believe carried him across that finish line. These are three things that can help you and I cross the finish line as well. And the first key to finishing the race, the first thing that I noticed about Paul's life is that you have to know why you're running. You have to know what you're running for. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, Paul talks about this. And in this chapter, he's telling the church why he preaches. He says, this is why I preach. He says, you know what? I don't do it for money. In fact, he, he tells them that even though the Lord has commanded that those who preach the gospel should make their living from preaching the gospel, Paul chose not to live that way. He doesn't preach for money, but he does get a reward. And his reward, he says, is essentially sharing in the blessings of the people who he leads to the Lord. Sharing the, the joy and the rewarding feeling that comes with introducing someone to Christ. But then in verses 24 through 27 of 1 Corinthians 9, he talks about the race, and here's what he says. Do you not know that in a race, all the runners run, but only one gets the prize? And he tells them, run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, he says, I do not, like, I do not run 
like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Paul says, I'm running for a prize. I know what I'm running for. I'm running to get to heaven. And I'm going to take as many people with me as I can. He says, I'm not running aimlessly. I'm not running without reason. Paul knew his reason. He knew that he was running to get to heaven. Church, when you're tired like some of you are and you're running, sometimes the only thing that keeps you going is knowing why you're running. I told you that Christina and I have gone home days and felt like quitting, felt like giving up, giving in. The only thing that has kept us going is knowing why we're running. Because God called us to do this. He told us to come here. And we're doing what he said to do. You have to know what your goal is. You have to know where you hope to end up. You see, in the movie Forrest Gump, Tom Hanks' character decides one day to just take off running. You ever seen that movie? It was back in the 90s. He just takes off running, and, and he's telling this story about taking off running, and he says, that day, for no particular reason, I started running. He says, and I got to the end of my driveway, and I thought, well, I've got this far. I might as well just run to the edge of town. So he runs to the edge of town. He says, you know what? I got this far. I might as well just run to the edge of the county. So he runs across the county and says, you know what? I got this far. I might as well just run to the the edge of the great state of Alabama. He gets there and he says, you know what? I might as well just keep running. And he ends up at an ocean on the west coast. And he says, when I got there, I decided, well, I've gotten this far. I might as well just turn around and keep running. And then he hits another ocean. And he says, you know what? I got this far. I might as well just, and he just keeps running. For three and a half years, Forrest Gump runs for no particular reason. And after about two and a half years, he's running across the Mississippi River and these reporters come and they have their, their tape recorders and their microphones held up to his mouth and they're, they're running along with him and they're asking him, are you doing this for world peace? Are, are you running for the homeless? Are you running for women's rights? And, and he responds to him and he says, I just felt like running. That is one of the most brilliant lines of any movie I've ever seen because it is absolutely ludicrous to think that anybody would just feel like running and would run for three and a half years. But the truth is that some of you are running a million different directions in your life for no particular reason. You don't know why you're running. And when that's what you're doing, it's really easy to just give up. You see, eventually Forrest gets tired, and so just out in the middle of the desert, he just stops running one day. And he turns around to the the 30 or 40 people that are following him, and he says, I'm pretty tired. I think I'll go home now. One of them says, what are we supposed to do now? Listen, that's all well and good if you're a character in a movie. But in real life, if you decide to stop running, it has a huge impact on your life, and it impacts all those around you as well. Think about if Paul had said, you know what, I'm tired. I think I'll go home now. If he had decided not to finish the race. Sadly, that's what happens sometimes when you run for no particular reason. The first key to finishing the race is knowing why you're running. The second key to finishing the race is maintaining your focus. How many of you know that the enemy will do everything in his power to distract you from the race that God wants you to run? Man, he'll come at you every direction he can trying to distract you and and confuse you and get you to stop running the race. Jesus kind of mentions this in Mark chapter 4. Jesus doesn't use the analogy of a race. He uses the analogy that we call the parable of the sower. 
He talks about seeds being sown, and this is what he says in Mark chapter 4, verses 18 and 19. He says, still others, like seeds sown among thorns, they hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desires of other things come in and choke the word, making it unfruitful. In other words, the enemy will use worry, doubt, confusion, lust, greed, power, material things. He'll use everything he can to choke out the word and distract you from running your race. One way to battle that is by being laser focused on the race. That type of focus is the only thing that could have kept Paul going. It's the only thing that could have kept him going over all the years, over the 10,000 plus miles, over the the 43,000 plus words, over the multiple times that he was arrested and had trials and, and was beaten and had struggles within the church and everything that Paul faced. The only thing that could keep him going was focus on the race. His focus kept him moving forward. We get a glimpse of that in Acts chapter 20. In Acts chapter 20, verses 21 through 24, here's what Paul says. He's speaking and he says, you know what? I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. He's going to the heart of Judaism not knowing what will happen there. He says, I only know that in every city, the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. Man, that's not a fun life, is it? Can you imagine if every day when you woke up, the Holy Spirit said, hey, just a reminder, prison and hardships are waiting on you. Here's what he says, though, in verse 24. However... I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task that the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. You think that Paul may have been focused? You think he might have had focus when he said, my only aim is to finish the race. He said, I don't know what's going to happen to me in Jerusalem. I don't know if they're going to arrest me, if they're going to beat me, if they're going to kill me. But it doesn't matter because my only aim is to finish the race that God gave me. My only aim. My life is worth nothing to me other than finishing the race. Paul knew why he was running, and he maintained his focus on the finish line. He wasn't going to allow fear or doubt or discouragement or opposition to distract or retract him. He was going to finish the race. It's that type of focus and determination that I want to have in my life. It's that type of focus and determination that I want to have in my ministry, in my marriage, in everything that I do. How about you? Doesn't that, don't you want to have that? If we're going to finish the race, we need to know why we're running and we need to maintain our focus. And then finally, the third thing that we need to do is keep moving forward. We need to keep running. We need to keep going. We need to keep pushing. We need to keep fighting. We need to never give up. Listen, I know that it sounds silly for me to say that the way that you keep running is by keeping running. (laughs) I get that. That's like when you look up a word in the dictionary and they give you that word to define it. But as silly as, as it is, whether it's silly or not, it's true. Sometimes when you're tired or when you're hurt or when you're broken or when you're discouraged, when you want to do anything in the world except keep running, then the thing that you need to do is keep running. Sometimes that's the only thing that you can do. 
is to determine in your heart that you're going to keep going. As Christina comes, I want to tell you a story. One time I, I worked with this girl, and she was going to Dallas to participate in an event. And it's called the Susan G. Komen Three Day for the Cure. Have you ever heard of this? The Three Day for the Cure. It's really quite an impressive event. What, what it is is it's kind of like a marathon but different. You join a team, you, you know, you get a, a team of people, and it's a fundraiser for cancer research. But what you do is you commit to get together with your team, and over three days you walk 60 miles, 20 miles a day. Usually it takes about 8 or 10 hours a day to walk that 20 miles. I can only imagine that at the end of this thing, it is just grueling. It, it is absolutely exhausting. But I remember this girl talking about how she was in training for the event, and, and I was kind of giving her a hard time, and I said, wait a minute, you're training to walk? And, and I was surprised at the time by her response. She said, she said oh, yeah. She said, you've got to train. She said, I know some people who have tried to do this, and they haven't trained properly, and they weren't able to finish. And I remember thinking, now listen, I've been tired before. But I cannot imagine getting to a point where I couldn't pick one foot up and put it in front of the other one. She said, no, there's some people that can't finish. Now, I want to be clear, that was 33-year-old Brian that, that couldn't imagine that. 45-year-old Brian gets it a lot more. In fact, yesterday when I was walking around the Little Rock Airport with Courtney for about three and a half hours, I, I think I got close to that point. But here's why I tell that story. Some of you today, you're here and mentally or emotionally or, or, or maybe spiritually, you're getting to the point where you really feel like you can't Pick up one foot and put it in front of the other one. You're exhausted and you're thinking about giving up. Sometimes when you get that way, the only thing that you can do is just keep going. Push through the pain. Push through the exhaustion. Push through the doubt. Push through the fear. If you would, I want you to look with me at Hebrews chapter 12. The writer of Hebrews decided that he wasn't going to let Paul be the only one who talked about the race. He said, I want to get in on this race action. And this is what he wrote in verses 1 and 2 of Hebrews chapter 12. He says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The word that is translated in this passage as perseverance is the Greek word hupomene. It means steadfastness, consistency, enduring patience. One person defined it like this, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Church, let us run with perseverance the race that's marked out for us.
today, if you're tired, I want to challenge you to stay the course. And one way that you can do that is to keep running. Know what you're running for. Maintain laser focus and just keep going. I'm going to ask everyone in the room to bow your head and close your eyes. Sometimes in life, our greatest accomplishments come from continuing to run when we don't feel like it. I may have shared this story with you before, but I remember one time when Justin was in third grade. We enrolled him in some speed training, speed school, and And as part of that, he participated in track meets. And his first track meet, we showed up, and we got there like an hour before we were supposed to be there, but they were ahead of schedule, so his event had already run. So they said, well, what we'll do is we're going to put him in the next race, and then we'll just put his time in with the other boys that are in his age group. And we were like, yeah, that's fine. So they put Justin on the line running the 100-meter dash against fifth-grade girls. Let me tell you something. Fifth-grade girls are a lot faster than third-grade boys. And I remember standing there up against the fence next to the track, and I was watching Justin run, and about halfway through that race or three quarters of the way through that race, it became real obvious that he was just getting smoked. And I watched him as he ran past the finish line with tears streaming down his face. I can't imagine what that felt like for him. He found out later that he got first place in his age group. But it was only because he kept running when he felt like quitting. Today, I don't know what you're facing, but if you're here and you feel like quitting, I want to encourage you to keep running. And you might be here and you might say, you know what, Pastor Brian, that sounds good, but I don't even know if I have the strength to do so. I need God to help me keep going. If that's you, I want you to lift up your hand. You can put your hands down. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for giving us an example in Paul of how we can make it through difficult times in life without turning aside, without giving up, without giving in. Lord, you see those who lifted their hands and said, I need God to give me strength because I don't even know if I can keep running. The truth is, Lord, you knew that before they raised their hand because you know our hearts, you know our minds. But, Lord, they've lifted their hand. They've said, I need God to help me. Lord, I pray that you will be faithful to your children today. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen, that you'll encourage that you'll motivate. Lord, that you'll help us to know why we're running and to maintain laser focused on the race. And God, as you give us the strength to do so, we promise 
to continue picking up one foot and putting it in front of the other. Lord, give us strength. In Jesus' name. Church, let's just wait on the Lord for a few minutes. His word says that those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. Let's give them time to do that today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing today. Thank you for giving us strength to finish the race.